morning. Good morning and welcome to Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, and we really mean that. Friends, we're so glad that you've come to worship with us today, whether you are inside of the building here at 6th and Daniel, or you're worshiping with us on Zoom or on Facebook, no matter where in the world you are, or when in the world, because we know some people uh, worship with us later. Uh, and catch the, the rerun of worship, no matter when or where you are. We're just so glad that you're here with us today. Um, we are continuing our worship series, um, Resurrection Stories. Um, there's a key to your resurrection, find yours. We're continuing that today. And I want to make sure um, that everybody got a key uh, we, we handed these out last week, and if you weren't here last week, the ushers would be happy to bring you a key. Just raise your hand, and they will bring you one. Um, our worship, uh, worship folks prepared these keys for you. They each have a little heart on them. Um, and we want you to hold on to this key. Um, put it someplace at home where you can see it where it will remind you of the stories that we're talking about here in worship um, and where it can remind you that there is a key to your resurrection story. Uh, the resurrection is not just a thing that happened once a long time ago. It is something that happens in our lives regularly um, and that there is a resurrection story that is waiting to be unlocked in your life. In fact, there's, there's more than one of those, and I bet you've already experienced some of them. Today, uh, we're, our, our, um, today our theme is, is freed. And so we're thinking about how in our brokenness um, we are freed by, by the love of Christ. Um, and it's interesting, the folks at the worship design studio who prepared this, um, this worship series for us, uh, they paired a very specific metaphor of freedom with today's stories. And that is, um, it's that of recovery, recovery from addiction, whatever kind of addiction that is. I would be willing to bet that each person in this space um, has had an experience with addiction, either our own addiction or the addiction of someone who we love. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to think about that in, um, in, in ways that are shaped by the love of God. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Again, friends, I want to welcome you to worship this morning. Um, we want to welcome you. And who are we? We are young and old and middle-aged. We're gay and straight and in between and beyond. We are street smart and college educated. We are confused and inspired, happy and sad. Some of us can't pay our bills and some of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are the body of Christ. Together, we are the church. And no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. And we really mean that. Welcome to worship. So we may be imprisoned by many things. Jesus' declaration that he had come to set the prisoners free can be interpreted for all of us, whether or not we've ever experienced being um, behind literal prison bars. This day, we'll hear resurrection stories that move us from chains to freedom, and we'll reflect on how we can each step into freedom from whatever binds us.
road to Emmaus. We travel so many roads, so many journeys in this life, sometimes traveling towards, sometimes away from a life of freedom. Jesus came and fell into step with them, but they did not recognize him. We are sometimes so overwhelmed with the struggles of this world that we can't see the companion that walks alongside us. Jesus asked them what they were talking about. We have recited our stories of pain so often that we can't imagine there are other ways to interpret events to get past the regret. They explained the horror of the recent past about their friend who was crucified and their disappointment at dreams of liberation dashed. We so often think we've hit the end of the road, the finale of the story, with nothing left to say. Then Jesus began to tell the story as a bigger picture. We sometimes perceive only the parts that feel insurmountable without zooming out to notice the larger narrative of hope. They invited Jesus to dinner after such a long walk. We actually know how to reach for help, even when we don't realize we need it. And Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. We are capable of having our eyes opened to the presence of love in our midst. Jesus vanished from the room as quickly as he had appeared on the road, but they were left with the awe and wonder of having their hearts transformed. We open, open to, to the, the possibility, possibility that, that nothing, nothing is closed, closed that, that our, our hearts, hearts can, can be opened, opened anytime, anywhere, and resurrection from death-dealing forces is possible. This is a word of hope for the people who long for it. Thanks be to the living God. Friends, you're invited to rise and body your spirit, and let us sing number 84, This Is The Day. Christ companions us on this journey, meaning that Jesus walks with us. And because of this, we can be honest about our lives, our struggles, and the things that keep us locked up. So, in this moment of quiet along the way, we can say what is holding us back, we can say what is keeping us locked up. We can say what imprisons us. We can admit to a loving God what we are too ashamed to say out loud. And so in this moment of silence, let us confess what separates us 
from the love of God here and now. Hear these words of restoration. <clears throat> uh, for folks who are in recovery, um, they know the serenity prayer backwards and forwards. And I think many of us actually know the serenity prayer, but do you know that there's a second half to it? Um, there's a whole second paragraph to the serenity prayer that doesn't get prayed very often. And there's a line in there that says, um, accepting hardships as as the pathway to peace. And I will tell you that this is the line that made me so mad. It just made me so very angry because I could not figure out how hardship was the pathway to peace. Um, And I would argue with God about this a lot, as if God was bringing hardship into my life so that I would be able to find peace. Really? I reject that idea, Jesus. It makes me feel like a marionette on a string. No, no. And then I realized that I was missing the important word in the sentence. Um, that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the hardship. It was the acceptance of it. How we hold things in life matters. And if we are doing this, then we're always going to struggle. But if we hold something like this, there's an acceptance to it. And that... That will be the pathway to peace for us. And so the key to peace is this, that as soon as truth is spoken and the desire for freedom is known, God, who is divine love, begins the process of resurrecting our lives. And so in this moment this moment of truth and honesty and holding things lightly, which means acceptance for the way things are, not the way that we would have them be, we experience freedom and resurrection. And so I say to all of us, in the name of Christ Jesus, we are forgiven and made new. Amen and amen. In this newness of life that we've all received, uh, we're all invited to rise, embody your spirit, and share signs of peace with each other. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. I want to invite you to look at the back wall and at the camera and say peace be with you to the folks who are worshiping with us on Zoom and on Facebook. Peace be with you. I want to invite um, kiddos to come forward. Hello. Bring, Bring your friends. Bring your friends. So you're going to have to come closer because I want you to see this thing. It's so very cool. Ooh. You want to touch it? Oh, yeah. Do you want to touch it? Isn't it neat? 
It's really heavy, isn't it? So let me, let me put it up here so that you all can see it. Can you see this? So we, um, we got this. When we were on spring break, we went to Memphis, and we went to the Metal Museum. You should all go to the Metal Museum. It's so cool. Um, and we saw this in the gift shop, and everybody in our family was like, oh, we need this. So it's a heart, but it's also a lock. And the lock is open right now, but there are keys, and we're thinking a lot about keys during this worship series. And look, you can do this, and then it's locked, which means you can also unlock it. So I thought that this was a good thing to bring and for us to talk about. Um, Have you ever felt like your heart is like this, like open. But then sometimes things happen and we, we do this and we do this. And we're like, nope, nope, nope. Whatever just happened, uh, it was too scary, it was too painful, it was too hard. I am not having an open heart any longer. I am locking it, I am keeping it shut because that way I can like protect it, right? It feels like I can protect it. But I have to tell you, that is not a very great way to get through life. So when we feel like we have closed off hearts, locked hearts, what are the things that are the keys to that? Do you have ideas? (laughs) Are you saying Violet's the key to that? Oh, family, yeah. And people that you feel safe with, that's right. Yeah, like when, um, when, when we have people who we can trust, and I want to back up and say, like not everybody has family or friends that they can trust. And sometimes it's family and friends who make us feel like we have to like lock our hearts up, right? But when we find um, friends Uh, who feel like family to us, who love us unconditionally, when we have family members who love us, who we feel safe with, who we can trust, um, yeah, it makes it possible for us to do this again. Um, I think sometimes, um, like, what, what happens if we, what happens if we have a misunderstanding or, or a hurt that happens with somebody who we love and trust? What's maybe the key that could help us to unlock our heart again? Talking it out. Yeah, being honest. Honesty. um, Forgiveness. Reconciliation. Right? Um, I don't know if those things are always possible, but I think we can always try. We can always try. Um, So I want you to remember this. Uh, And remember how sometimes it feels like we have to do this with our hearts. Um, And when when it feels like your heart is like this, what are the keys that we have that can unlock our hearts? Honesty, trust, love. um, Love in the way that Jesus loved us and that we can try to love each other. Thanks for coming up. That was a good conversation.
Good morning, I'm Julie McClure and I'll be your liturgist today. After the sermon, we will offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud. Whether you're sitting here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us remotely, you're invited to add your joys and concerns to the prayer list. Go to community-ucc.org slash pray, a Google form, or scan the QR code found here or there are prayer cards on the table at the back of the sanctuary that you may fill out and hand to the ushers. Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. Today is a sacred reading from the epistles, Romans 8, verses 12 through 26. So then, siblings, we are obligated not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we in fact suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its enslavement to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning together as it suffers together the pains of labor, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what one has already sees? But we hope for what we do not see. We wait for it with patience. Together let us say, May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. We invite you to rise, embody your spirit, and join us for hymn 243 
Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven. seated. Friends, I do want to invite you, if you've not picked up one of the devotional booklets for this worship series, they're on the back table to do that um, because there's, a, there's a, a journaling prompt for each week and a story. You can scan the QR code and it'll take you directly, directly to a video. This week, um, this week's resurrection story uh, is about... Um, is about the rapper Jelly Roll. Um, his actual name is Jason DeFord. And he has this incredibly powerful story. Um, in 2023, he had three number one country hits uh, and had been nominated for two Grammy Awards. He was only 39. But prior to that, he had been imprisoned at the Metro Davidson County Detention Center in Nashville, Tennessee. He spent his teenage years in the prison system. Starting at age 14, he was in and out of prison for lots of different offenses, so drug possession, dealing, shoplifting, aggravated robbery. And there's always a reason why people are the way that they are. I think he was trying to work out his stuff, right? but not in healthy and healing ways. He had a mom who struggled with drug addiction and a father who booked bets. And so addiction was just, it was in his DNA. He loved music and he loved it so much that he wrote songs from his prison cell. And when he was 24 years old in prison, Everything changed when he learned from a prison guard um, that he had a daughter, and her name was Bailey. 
So out of prison, DeFord continued recording and distributing his rap music until he had this breakthrough in 2020 with an acoustic version of one of his songs, and it caught the ear of country fans. And the following year, he performed at the Grand Old Opry, and the rest, well, the rest is history and a lot of hard work because life is hard work and recovery is hard work. And part of the work that is hard but is good is that Jelly Roll visits um, prison and he talks with the folks there about hope and he shares his story of freedom this story that has been born out of so much breaking. There is a resurrection story to be had in the breaking, but we have to be honest about it because there are two kinds of breaking. There's the kind that breaks us apart and the kind that breaks us open. As we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So on Friday, I ran away to Indianapolis to see a friend of our congregation and my dear friend and colleague, the Reverend Ann Cansfield. If you don't know who Ann is, um, Anne is a pastor in New York City, and she is the first woman and first openly LGBTQ person to be a um, chaplain for the fire department of New York City. So I went to visit Anne and 40,000 of her best firefighter friends. And when I tell you that, that, uh, that I went to see 40,000 of her best firefighter friends, I'm telling you, Anne knows no stranger, um, and especially since she's walking around the convention in her, in her chaplain outfit, people talk with her, Rev, how you doing, Rev? Uh, and so we got to go behind the scenes and see all the things. It was really fun. And then, around 1 o'clock, we made our way into Lucas Oil Stadium, where the Colts play. And standing there... Um, with hundreds, thousands of other folks, uh, we prepared for the memorial stair climb. So this is something that firefighters do at events like this. There are these um, stair climbs to remember the people who died on 9-11. So every person who signed up to participate in the stair climb got a badge, a name badge, with a photo, and a, and a number, and a name. And they clipped it to their outfit. Some people wore their full uniforms. And after some ceremony, folks climbed all the way up to the top of, of, of Lucas Oil Stadium, and then went up and down the stairs, and up and down the stairs, and up and down the stairs, all around the top and then back down again to salute and ring a bell and say the name of the person who they were climbing for. But before that happened, as I said, there was ceremony. And after the bagpipers and the drums played Amazing Grace, um, someone who's part of the... Uh, the, the team that works with firefighters who were affected by 9-11 took the stage. And he went on to, to say some, some important words framing this experience, but also spoke directly to the firefighters and encouraged them to care for themselves. And he said, we want to encourage you to be screened for cancer because so many people who were there during that horrific day have died from cancers related to that experience. But as soon as that word came out of his mouth, Anne leaned over to me and she said, I mean, we don't just, just die of cancer, we die of alcoholism too. And 
And that moment of honesty kind of broke my heart. I wondered if that was a story that I was allowed to tell. I've gone to visit Anne in New York City. I've visited firehouses with her before. There are, there are stories I'm not allowed to tell. And I wondered, I wondered if that was a story I was allowed to tell. So over dinner, I, I asked, I explained, well, today we're talking about the road to Emmaus story and this moment of breaking and of breaking apart and breaking open and, and about addiction. Because addiction affects all of our lives. Two-thirds of Americans say that they have been affected by addiction in some kind of way, either because we are addicts or we love somebody who is. And so over dinner, I asked her, am I allowed to tell that story, Anne? And she said, yeah, that's no secret. And I said, are you sure? Are you sure I'm allowed to tell that story? We're continuing this conversation as we leave the restaurant. And so we're walking down the street, and I'm saying, are you sure? Are you sure I'm allowed to tell the story? She says, let's see. And she goes up to a random group of firefighters and says, hi, folks, um, chap chaplain here. Uh, my friend here, she's a pastor. Uh, she's going to be telling, she wants to tell a story. Um, on Sunday morning, and she recapped for them what had happened there before the stair climb started. They had all been in the room. They heard. They heard that comment. And then she said, she wants to know if it's a secret that alcoholism affects the fire department. I want to think that they laughed at me in a nice way. Uh, there was lots of laughing. <laughs> And they assured me, this is not a secret at all. And I have to tell you that the breaking that had happened in my heart when I heard the captain say that, I broke in a different kind of way. I was grateful that this thing wasn't a secret because our addictions, they fester and feed in secret. But when light shines on them, they change. There's something that happens in the breaking. There's something that happens when we are broken in a way that we try to keep hidden from others. But when folks decide that they are powerless, to their addiction, whether that addiction is alcohol or drugs or gambling or sex or food or there are so many other ways that addiction shows up in people's lives. When people get honest about that and they are seen, really seen, something changes inside of them. When we are seen, really seen, in our most broken moments, Everything that has kept us locked up and behind bars, so to speak, all of that starts to soften. It's what happens in 12-step meetings when people show up and they realize that they're not alone in this powerlessness. And there are, as I said before, different kinds of breaking there's the kind of breaking that breaks us apart, and there's the kind of breaking that breaks us open. The kind of breaking that shatters, and the kind of breaking that sets us free. The disciples, they experienced so much breaking, the kind that shatters. Everything that they thought they knew got shattered in the unexpected arrest and trial and crucifixion of Jesus. I know, I know, Jesus told them that it was going to happen, but they didn't really think it would. I think they are still so brokenhearted when they're on the road to Emmaus. But then something 
happens when this stranger shows up and says, I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you tell me what has happened? What happened to you? Tell me about your breaking. They are seen, they're really seen for perhaps the first time since it all took place. They are seen in all of their fear and all of their pain and all of their grief. Their hearts don't just break in that moment because their pain is shared with another person. Their hearts don't just break, they are broken open. And we hear them say it later, right? Were not our hearts burning inside of us? Because suddenly they were known, known in a different way than they had been before. Suddenly they were not alone in their pain, but they were known in their pain. And that's when they're able to see it with new eyes. Suddenly, in the breaking, they are known. Jesus breaks the bread, and in that moment, they know who's been with them all along. When it comes to addiction, when it comes to loving people who struggle with addiction, when we finally let the brokenness of our lives be known, then we are seen in a whole different way. And there is freedom in that. That is true whether, whether we are struggling with addiction or whether we love someone who is. There's freedom in the breaking when the breaking doesn't happen alone. There's freedom in the breaking when the breaking is known. And my prayer for all of us today is that if we are keeping in secret behind closed doors that kind of breaking, that we will be brave enough to let it be known. And remember that bravery is just feeling our fear and acting anyway. So I pray that if we have to do it scared, that we'll do it anyway. Amen. Good morning. This is the moment in worship when we share the joys and concerns of our congregation, friends, and community. You can find ongoing prayer requests in your bulletin. And now, please join me in prayer as we hold the community's needs in our hearts. As I read each petition aloud, please say with me, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Peg has asked us to pray for her sister, Diane Johnson, who's hospitalized in the ICU with a blood clot in her lungs. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Carrie asks for prayers for her friend's mom, Shirley, for comfort and reassurance for her overwhelming feelings of fear and helplessness as she settles into her new nursing home, and also for physical healing and relief from her double hip replacement surgery and the weeks-long ongoing recovery, pain and weakness in her legs. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jean asks for prayers for friend and campus ministry alum from their era, Margie Mintern Hay, whose husband died of Alzheimer's this week. The memorial service will be tomorrow. Prayers for her and for her family that they may feel comfort in this time of loss. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Janelle asks for prayers for the family and friends of Hazel Jones, who passed away Tuesday. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come to this space carrying the stuff of our lives. We all have um, people and places uh, that we are concerned about, that we hold. And so I would invite us all from the many places that we come um, in this moment to be of one mind and one heart as we offer our prayers to God. Oh God, when the burdens we carry seem far more than we can bear, when the walls that hold us in seem too high to ever scale, and when the road before us seems far too long and hard for us to walk, let us know that your presence is with us, bringing peace, bringing hope, bringing new life, bringing the key to our resurrection. You are the one who makes a way where no way seems possible. Oh God, you are the one who breaks the shackles that hold us fast. You know everything about us. And you love us even then. You are the one who will never forsake us. And so help us to hold fast to you and to your ways, even as you hold fast to us. God, help us to be open to the ways you are at work, even in the midst of our mess, ready to lead us into a more spacious place, freed and healed and made holy as you dwell with us and within us. O oh God, unlock our hearts, unlock our minds, unlock our spirits, that we might know and embrace the ways you lead to resurrection. Give us the key, we pray. And we pray now in the words of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Alleluia. The invitation to give is an opportunity to live resurrected. We are no longer bound to greed, no longer tied to the expectations of others. Instead, as an Easter people, we are free to live as Christ lived, with love, generosity, and service at our centers. 
You may give online at community-ucc.org by clicking donate or give in person. May God bless the gifts and the givers. Hey folks, while we get organized, there's one little part I want to teach you, and at the end of this song, I would love if you would join us. Um, so, if you look at your text for the offertory, the last two lines that say, brothers, oh stand with me, it'll be different each time, somebody or other is going to stand with us each time, okay? But at the end, you'll have heard this a couple times, so I'm just going to sing it for you once, and you're going to sing it with me, and then you'll be like, yeah, I know that, I'm going to sing it, okay? So it, it goes, um, brothers, oh, stand with me, rise up hand in hand, oh, stand with me, we will rise to spread love across the sing that with me and you can sing whatever harmonies you think go with that if you're like that's too high for me go down the octave sing something else just sing with us all right so we're going to try it together right from there um, I'm going to give you brothers and you're just going to sing all right people here we go here we go brothers oh stand with me rise up and in Awesome when we get to it, and I'll be like, sing with me, people. Okay, so don't leave me hanging. All right, uh, here we go for real. You guys can come up for the offertory. Sorry, I know we sort of screwed up the. <laughs> Just count us in. Sure. Um, you know you're doing that intro. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four. I will rise with all my daughters, I will rise against my foes, I will rise with all the mothers, I will carry all their woes, I will rise to fight for freedom, I will rise though faced with fears, I will rise against all hatred while my eyes are veiled in tears. I will rise for religious freedom, for a rich diversity. I will rise for all the weary, for each lonely refugee. I will work for all our women who deserve equal pay. I will work for all our children who await a better day. Sisters, oh, stand with me, rise up hand in hand, oh, stand with me, we will rise to spread love across this bitter land. I will rise for love and justice, we may see a better day. I will rise in peace and service, for our world in disarray. I will rise with all my brothers, for all those who cannot stand. I will rise with all our fathers, who have lost a home and land. I will rise to build up bridges, this broken world we see I will tear down walls between us that divide you and me brothers oh, oh stand with me rise up hand in hand oh stand with me we will rise Love across this bitter land. Let's sing. Oh, stand with me. Rise up hand in hand. Oh, stand with me. We will rise to spirit. 
spread love across this bitter land. Thanks, everybody. Oh, that was so good. We should have Kathy and Larry sing more often, don't you think? That was lovely. Friends, it's time for the commissioning of the community, that moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. So today, <laughs> excuse me, following worship, there's um, just some, some simple lunch stuff that will be waiting for you in Fellowship Hall. That's also where our, our after-party snacks are going to be today, uh, following worship. And then you're invited to stay. There's a Mental Health 101 that's going to happen in Fellowship Hall with folks from Chestnut Health. Um, and it's going to start at noon. This will only take, it will take no more than an hour. It might even take 45 minutes. Um, this is the second of like four trainings that we are doing to better equip ourselves, both individually and as a church, um, to, be able to, uh, to be able to walk with people who are dealing with uh, mental health issues and addiction issues. So we had the Narcan training um, earlier in the year and now Mental Health 101, and we'll have additional trainings, including a suicide prevention training that is gonna happen in, uh, in the spring. So please join us, and even if you can't stay for the training, come downstairs for the after party following worship. Jean. Just a quick thank you from Patty Grapp and I, on behalf of your mission team, um, for those who came out yesterday to help with the yard cleanup at one of our DSC um, Community Integrated Living Arrangement Homes. Um, we had a great turnout, Dave and Ellen Wilcox, Jan and Becky, Jeff and Emily Reidick, Peg Wade, Patty and I, Elizabeth Shack, Jennifer Cromley all came and we made good use of our time and cleared patios and picked up two big piles of sticks and raked a bunch of stuff up and it looks a lot nicer than when we arrived. So thank you for your help. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you everyone. Good morning. Um, want to alert you that Pub Theology, our Tuesday night book club-ish thing, um, <laughs> is going to be starting a new book, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. Uh, we'll be reading You Are Changing the World, Whether You Like It or Not, by, by David Lamott. Um, it's a book on change and how we are, in fact, affecting change and being change agents and doing change and activating for more change. And it will give us, I think, uh, based on the chapter headings, it looks like it's going to give us some real good tools to help do the little bit of activation or um, movement that we might need to help change and make our world a better place. So that's a week from this Tuesday, we'll start a new book. If you're not already on the mailing list for me and would like to join us, just let me know. I'll add you to the list and I'll share with where you can find this book. So week from Tuesday, new book, thanks. Thanks so much. Um, if you were not here last week, then you missed the news. We have called a new campus minister and youth minister for uh, CUCC and UCC campus ministry here at UIC. There's a little bit of information about Pastor Nicole in your yellow sheet. And look for your May communogram, which is going to come out this week, with a full bio and also information about how you can get to know Pastor Nicole. So she is beginning, she's having a remote uh, start to work that begins May 1st. And if you are a Church Life Board member or a Campus Ministry Board member, please remember to go into the Google Doc uh, where we're building an onboarding uh, orientation list for Pastor Nicole and to put down information that you think she needs to know about. So friends, we want to encourage you to look for information about um, getting to know Pastor Nicole in the coming months. Um, last but not least, I'm going to be um, leading a retreat for clergy people um, Tuesday through Thursday um, this week over in Indiana. Um, and so I, uh, I won't be checking email because um, I'm going to be uh, knee-deep in retreat things. Um, if there is an emergency, though, please do text, and we will tend to your emergency. Uh, friends, there is uh, a closing hymn for us. Um, 
Kathy and I chose to sing Amazing Grace um, months ago, long before I ever stood in Lucas Oil Stadium and heard the, the Pipers play Amazing Grace this past Friday. It is interesting to me how the Spirit works sometimes. It's number 547. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. Let's sing. binds you, whatever locks you up, whatever keeps you from the life which you were created for, it can be opened. For we believe our stories can be rewritten each and every day. We know it isn't easy or quick, but let this be a vision of your life unlocked, life resurrected. And now, May you go into the world unlocking new life in all the ways you discover you can for yourself, for others, for the world. And may God who created you to be raised up and Christ who showed you what resurrection looks like and the Spirit who is transforming your life even now be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. 